I'm going to have one line, one large line of argumentation, which is going to be that we're harming those that need adoption the most. But before that, I just want to refer to the fact that Truman clearly doesn't understand markets, and even more embarrassingly, clearly doesn't understand humans. <laughs> Let's start with the humans part. Because the whole case of opening government is to say, look, some people you know, just hold on to their babies, they don't give relative adoption, even though they clearly should. And we recognize there are some people who clearly should give those children to adoption. We claim that in the cases where they clearly should, most people do, because it's clear. We also think there is a symmetric group of people who clearly should not give those, people, those children to adoption, and those people usually do not. This debate happens in that spectrum of people who are deliberating hard, where at least within the information that they have available, with the uncertainties they have about their economic status, about their emotional availability, and so on, they are unclear as to whether they want to give to adoption or not. Presumably, in the positive side, where people don't intentionally just farm babies out, in the positive event, that is the circumstances we're talking about. People who really do kind of are deliberating, and that would help make the decision. What Amichai tells you, and I will now continue, is that if someone is deliberating on difficult questions, on vague questions, in an emotionally difficult time in their life, saying, look, here's a concrete sum of cash that you know exactly what you can do with, that you have no uncertainty for, that you will get tomorrow morning, is a terrible way of influencing how they make the decision. They are correct. There are some people for which that will be the right decision. But that is a bad way of influencing their decision-making process because people are not homo economicus. They are not perfectly rational. And when you give them a clear benefit, no thank you, in front of their eyes with large uncertainties that they cannot quantify and they don't know and they're afraid, that is a way to make sure that they listen to the market incentives and not to the real questions that they want. So, this is why, no thank you, when Schroeder tells you they have a big impact, that we have a small impact, that you can solve the regulation, no! You cannot solve the fact that people do not make good, long-term, uncertain decisions with regulation. You are genuinely distorting their decision process. But even worse is how they treat markets. Because, A, they assume that markets are perfect, they assume that prices lead to the optimal uh, allocation of resources, in this case, adoption, uh, but they ignore the realities of how markets really work. Several notes on this. One, they don't work well when not all sides are rational. I'll get into this more into my points. They don't work well when there's an asymmetry of information as we have here. And perhaps two most important things. Allowing people to pay things solves a problem with supply, not a problem with demand. If the problem is that people waiting to be adopted don't have parents, having parents pay rather than doing this for free does not solve that. We are incentivizing parents to give up babies, which is part of what they've talked about, but it doesn't make sure that children find adopting homes, which is a bigger problem. And secondly, we think that markets, at their best, are great for consumers, but are terrible for the products. And we'll talk about that more. So let's talk about what the adoption system actually looks like. Look, the adoption system has two tiers. There are babies who have just been born, are flaw-free, you can't see anything wrong with them, uh, uh, and sadly, they tend to be white, which lots of parents want. There is immense demand, which leads to the fact that many people have to go through months and months of interviewing to make sure that they are the optimal parents for this baby. What they're proposing to do is to equalize supply and demand by pricing. That is terrible for the babies. That is, why, why is that? Several notes on that. One, when you equalize supply and demand, you always have surplus, because markets don't work perfectly. Adoption agencies will not want to wait until they have a specific parent waiting to adopt a specific baby before they talk to families about the option of maybe sending their child to adoption, right? Because you don't want to take that risk. What we'll get is exactly what we heard from opening government, right? That parents will want to see the selection of babies that they have. What this means is several things. One, you will have parents which agencies have convinced they want to give to adoption, but then end up not selling their baby. Shulman responds by saying, oh, the welfare system will take everyone, but the welfare system is terrible, as he told us. We think this is a terrible thing to do. We think it's incredibly important that many babies have parents waiting for them and waiting for to be able to get them. Note also that, uh, 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 okay, let's move on to the next part, which is there are a lot of other children, no thank you, that are harder to sell. 
These children, older children, right, children have been through traumas, children that are not of the same race as most rich people, children that come from bad families, those are harder to get to adopt. Right now what happens, all adoptions are free. Parents arrive at the adoption agency and realize these are the only babies that they see. Once you've, you've adopted all the prime babies, uh, they see the cutest baby they've ever seen, because that's what's on offer, and they take them because they're free. What happens when you price this? Two things. One, or maybe Schulman claims that what we'll get is kind of this optimal pricing. So everyone will say, oh, I don't want this baby. Five dollars less? Sure, I will take this baby. We claim that's not going to happen. Why? This decision is a huge decision. It's irreversible and it's a lifelong decision. And it has a lot of uncertainty. You don't know what that child will be like. In these kinds of decisions, parents play it safe. No one buys half-priced babies. This is why dating sites also don't price different dates according to their popularity. Because no one will say, okay, for $200 less, let's take this baby who's not the optimal one. What will they do? A, maybe I don't want to risk a traumatized baby, right? Maybe I don't just want to... Yes, close it. Most, no. most, of, those, most of those children are going to go to good homes and good families. They're going to support them. On the competitive, we think that most of those babies wouldn't go to those specific good homes and we're going to explain exactly why. The number of parents who adopt does not rise when you add prices. The number of parents who might have given children a decent life and even a suboptimal life does rise. What this proposal does is it takes children who could have been adopted instead of being at, at you call it a welfare home, there's a better name for that, but my English is just as bad as children. Uh, uh, at orphanages, instead of giving them happy homes, you're replacing them by those parents that you're persuading to give babies. Look, I mean, I told you about the disadvantages of adopting in general, and specifically when you know that it's for a price. That's a complicated question, whether you ride by those lines of argumentation more, or the reasons of how terrible those families that are deliberating are. What isn't a difficult decision is children who have no one to take them. You're incentivizing people to take more and more of the children who match what are their preconceptions of what they want, and less people to be available for those who actually need adoption. The most important people in this debate are those who have no home, who have no family, and nowhere to go. Please oppose.